and welcome to another Green Giant Tactical Airsoft review video. Today we'll be covering a uh, WE Glock 17, uh, as seen in this box. Uh, the box it comes in relatively nondescript and to the point we logo just you know what it is and the model itself. Uh, what we have inside the box itself uh, is just the well, manual, which has fallen out, usual drivel in Shinglish. Not much point reading that. Uh, 26 rounds metal magazine uh, with what appears to be on the back the WE high output valve, which will be interesting to see how that performs. Um, and the gun itself, which in this variation has a chrome slide. I've yet to work out whether the slide is painted or uh, just knocking stuff over. Uh, or it is actually bare metal uh, with a clear coat on it, so that's going to be down to wear and tear as to whether I find that out or not. Um, you've got some vague... Get the camera to focus. There we go. Got some get vague Glock markings, no obvious ones, there's no real traded ones because uh, then all the other trades on here, if I can get the lighting right. Okay, I'm not gonna, basically, you've got a WE logo on the grip there, and on the back side of this is made in Taiwan and all that jazz. Uh, typical stunt WE fare. Other than that, you've got a metal top slide, as reasonably solid, as a nice return back. Uh, you've got uh, front and well, front and rear sights with white rims on them, um, uh, which we'll go over more in a second. A pretty much standard what you'd expect to be for a Glock. Um, what I'll do now is just put the mag in. Um, so, nice solid return into the magwell. Again, what you'd kind of expect. This is a Gen 4 model, just to be clear. Um, older versions were sketchy at best on performance, so um, I'm not wearing any iPro, be well, because I know it's not loaded, because I haven't, I always make sure to clear the BBs out every time anyway. So, got <laughs> Nice, good solid return, and by God, it's loud, <laughs> um, which is not so great in my little flat. So, again, another reason why there's no BBs in it. Um, so, it's nice, solid cycling. A um, few things to note, however, um, I've put quite a few rounds through this now, um, but I'm noticing that on the outer barrel itself. The paint finish is a little sketchy. Um, you can just about see it marking away. They see a little dot, roughly about half an inch underneath my finger. That's not going to be noticeable after a while, uh, until you've been shooting it for a while. But it doesn't feel the greatest sense of confidence in the paint quality itself. Um, other things I've noticed is when you'll first get these, the front sight is a little bit on the loose side. That will require you to break down the pistol and uh, tighten the screw in the back. Um, I've actually put a little lock tight in it just to make sure, um, but it's still a bit loose. Um, so just break it. So I pull the slide back. Just, um, yeah, the. Uh, Catches to release these are a little, uh, well, as typical with Glocks, fiddly as hell to get out. Right. Can I get attention? There we go. Right. So, inside, pretty much standard Glock fare. This looks, I have to say, the inside of this doesn't look that far off a TM. Um, few variations in the arrangement inside, but I think you'd have no problems modifying TM parts to fit inside that. Uh, we've got a roller on the hammer. Well, that's kind of necessary anyway. Um, I have seen a few of the cheaper Glock variations, not WE and not TM. Um, 
which will just have a rolling hammer which has no roller on it which means that they wear down a hell of a lot quicker um, which is not great for airsoft because uh, I think we want it wearing down too quickly um, you've got the catch there on the, just rotate that around this catch there makes it incredibly difficult to put the slide back on once you've uh, dismantled it so beware of that um, This has probably had about two, two and a half thousand rounds through it at this point in time. Um, so you'll get, I'm starting to get wear on the slide bits. I'm a bit dubious as to how long this is actually going to last if that's the sort of condition it's hitting in at this sort of mark. Obviously, you've got the rail up front on there so you can put a torch. And I have one here. This is one working, this is just to prove a point. And again, it's a non-standard size, so it's actually quite difficult to get the thing on. Right, so that's an, on in place. But this is a standard size torch. Where's this gap appearing from? <laughs> so I'll just put that off for a moment. Um, inside the gun itself, uh, or inside this top slide itself, so the top half, uh, you've got a nice solid return spring. Just, but I don't quite get the arrangement of this. Whereas in the TM, you actually have a peg connecting this, the inside of the spring, and aligning it with the hop unit itself and the outer barrel. This has no such arrangement. It is literally pull it out of the way and hope to hell you've got enough tension on it to get the. This is going to prove difficult to dismantle because you're going to have to keep constant tension on that to constant tension on that so you're pushing it all the way out like so and then hope to hell you can position this in such a way to drop the uh, outer barrel out which I don't think I'm going to have quite enough tension to do so oh nearly Another thing you have to be careful is you don't snap the nozzle. Yeah, all that happens. Um, okay. I, I'll, I'll just complete this. This will probably get edited out in the final cut. Right, there we go. Okay. Dismantle down the slide and from the inside of that it would appear it's been painted. So there we go, we've got the definitive solution on that. It has definitely been painted to this colour. You've got a plastic buffer up the top, presumably to prevent the obvious weak point around this where it's slide where it's slamming against as it slides back under the pressure. Um, inside there You've got a, the screw I earlier mentioned. Um, seems reasonably solid in there. I'm not going to go through the fault process of removing the gas chamber and so on. But to do that, you basically, there's a screw. I love this camera, if not. Um, you've got a, okay, you've got a screw there. You unscrew that, give it a quick tap on the end base plate there, and that will allow you to push the entire thing up. That screw is also holding that sight in, so you'll have to move the sight as well. That sight in, so you move that sight. Um, the gas chamber itself seems reasonably good, but wouldn't hold any hope in it. Okay, so here's the incredibly tight spring that was the rear return spring. Um, I have absolutely no idea what the um, strength of that spring is because I'd take, hazard a guess if I was putting a guard or a TM spring in, a TM upgrade style spring, at that being 150 to 170 percent because that's way stronger than anything you'll find in a TM. Hop and barrel itself, solid hop, um, just appears to, yes, yeah, two screws on the side, remove that. And it splits open pretty much standard. These use a VSR cut barrel. Um, 
have no idea why. I assume it's probably down to availability of parts. Other than that, you've got a brass and a barrel. Um, depending on how you like to shoot, you'll probably want to take an upgrade barrel, barrel to that. I will be trying to find um, a Lalax one, for instance. Most people opt for RA tech parts because of easy availability and so on, but I don't like them. So um, You've got an adjuster wheel at the bottom for the hop, um, which from what I can see makes absolutely no difference on this hop, so I'll be leaving that alone. Um, other than that, you've got what appears to be a nicely painted black outer barrel, until you look inside. That is pathetic, WE. You could have at least finished it off. I've got a, another Glock uh, cheap uh, manufacturer that you'd expect um, to be found for two-tone guns, which has a better in outer barrel than that. And that cost me half the price of this, so uh, that begs the question what's going on there. So see how easy it is to put back together again. I'm going to love this bit, aren't I? Um, so put the I'm wondering if this is probably going to be the worst way of doing it. Okay. The purposes of keeping it on camera. You've got the notch on the side, keeping that all up that way. You've got the notches which line up. So on that side, you've got the little peg which lines up with the slot. So as I slide it in, this camera can't pick it up anyway. Okay, so that little notch in there slides into the slot. Take that entire assembly, put it inside the slide, lock it back into position. Hope to hell I can get my compression on this to then lock. Okay, that's interesting. It's a, a lot easier to get back together again. Uh, I should have practiced a couple of times because it's been, it's been about half a week since I've dismantled this at last. Um, then taking the end of this, I've not quite worked out the ideal way of doing this. You can't really approach it the same as a TM because it locks up for some benign reason. Um, so, see, this is the problem you get. Uh, that little notch is causing it to not release. I can understand why they've got it, but I've got, to, on a TM, I'd just be able to slide that over and go. Uh, so, obviously, some quality control issues there. Okay, it's a bit disconcerting that I'm having to slide it that hard. Okay, cycling nice and solid now. So just double check I've reassembled it correctly. Pocket, slide forward, locked back. Um, yeah. Yeah, reasonably well done. Okay, lock it out, hammer off. Okay, um, apart from my obvious blathering and so on, uh, I'll end it there. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on Facebook, is it follow? Uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter, uh, like us on Facebook, and uh, subscribe on YouTube. Also visit our website, which is uh, ggtactical.pixelsites.com. Uh, uh, that will soon be changing, um, but having a few problems with the host. Um, all the stuffs, all the other stuffs and links. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.